Good evening, Bearcats. This is 2.3, Polynomial and Synthetic Division. Um, we're going to do a lot of examples. This is a review from last year, and I want your skills built back. Uh, these are the things that we're going to learn. We're going to learn to use long division to divide polynomials by other polynomials. We're going to use synthetic division to divide polynomials by binomials. And we're going to learn about the remainder theorem. Um, we use long division and synthetic division to help us eventually, I'm sorry, to evaluate and eventually graph polynomial functions. And the remainder theorem can be used to evaluate polynomial functions. So let's get started with our examples. All right, let's review some long division. <clears throat> We're going to be dividing this polynomial by x minus 2. Long division, just like old-fashioned division when you were in elementary school and learned to divide long division-wise. All right, let's review our skill. We're going to take the x part, and we're going to think to ourselves how many x's will go in 6x cubed. Or I like to think x times what gives me 6x cubed, and that would be a 6x squared. So 6x squared times x would give me 6x cubed. Then don't forget, you have to do 6x squared times negative 2, which is a negative 12x squared. Now, be really careful because old-fashioned division is that you're going to subtract all of these things. So they're all the signs. So you're going to subtract everything here. So we're going to change this sign, and we'll have to change this sign to a positive, and then we'll add down. The first should always cancel out in long division. That was the whole point. We have a negative 19 and a positive 12, so we have a negative 7x squared. Negative 7x squared. All right, and we have, bring down the others, plus 16x, and then minus 4. All right, let's start again. So we're going to take our x. x times what gives me negative 7x squared? And that would be negative 7x. So negative 7x times x is negative 7x squared. And then, of course, we have to go negative 7 ti x times negative 2 would be a positive 14x. Positive 14x. Now, again, again, we have to subtract both. So this will become a positive, and the 14 will become a negative. Draw a line, add down. Again, these cancel. Positive 16, negative 14 gives me a positive 2x minus 4. Looks like our last round because... We can only put x into x's, so we have x times something gives me 2x, and that would be a positive 2. So 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times negative 2 is a negative 4. And then once again, we subtract both and end up with a 0 remainder in this case. So we just divided by long division this cubic equation, and we now have divided and we have a quadratic. One of the things I want you to notice that happened is that we had a factor x, oops, x minus 2, where we know our 0 would have been 2. Now we have broken this down, and we have a remainder, or we have divided, and we have x squared minus 7x plus 2. So we could use factoring or quadratic formula or completing the square to find our other zeros of this particular polynomial. All right, we'll move on to another example. You can pause and write down what you need. All right, we're going to divide x cubed minus 1 by x minus 1. When we set up our division, notice that we go from a cube and we don't have a squared or an x to the first term. So we're going to have to have placeholders for that. Um, you can either skip space or you can actually put zeros in there. I usually just skip space, but if you like the zeros, you can. So I'm going to do x cubed, and I'm just going to skip like kind of places where the squared and the neg and the uh, x term would go, and then I'm going to say minus 1. If you want to put the zeros x is in there and the 0x squared in there, you can do that if that helps you. So I will write it both ways. You'll see me probably skip more often, but on here I'll go ahead and show you what that means. So that's a positive, and we'll make a plus 0x there. All right, and we're dividing by x minus 1. And then we're back to where we were. How, x times something gives me x cubed. That would be x squared. x times x, x squared times x is x cubed. And x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. So we've got to be really careful with this. Now, we've got to subtract both. So this becomes a positive. We're going to add down. So 1x squared to 0x squared is just x squared. And then we have still plus 0x minus 1. So x times what gives me x squared? That would be a positive x. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Again, subtracting both. This cancels. Add down. You get x minus 1. Ah, x minus 1 divides into x minus 1, I believe, one time. 
So positive one, and we have our answer. And again, we would have gone from a cubic to a quadratic, and our we have a factor of x minus one, therefore a zero of one, and we would have x squared plus x plus one, and again, you would have to solve this by quadratic formula, completing the square to find the zeros of the polynomial, or of the quadratic. All right, we got one more of these, and then we'll move on to synthetic division. So pause and write down what you need. All right, let's keep going here. All right, we're going to divide this polynomial by 2x squared plus 1. So 2x squared times something gives me 6x cubed. That would be a 3x. So 2 times 3 is 6, and x times x squared is x cubed. And then don't forget, we have to do 3x times 1. Ah, it skips over. So notice you're going to leave a space here, or you can put 0 to hold your place if you want. But 3x is going to line up under the 3x, under the x over here. Now, we got to subtract all the way through, so we're going to make this a negative and this a negative and draw our line. These will cancel. Add down. You still have 10x squared. Add down here. You have negative 2x and plus 8. Now, 2x squared times what gives me 10x squared. That's going to be a positive 5. So 5 times 2x squared is 10x squared. 5 times 1 is 5, again lining up under the, um, its place. Subtract both, cancel out, add down, negative 2x, and plus 3. Now, you can't put 2x squared into 2x, so we're going to have a remainder. Because this is subtract or negative, we're going to put subtraction here, and we're going to write this binomial, 2x plus 3, oh, oops, over a divisor of 2x squared plus 1. 2x squared plus 1. And that's how you would write your answer. Go Bearcats! Let's move on to synthetic division. All right, synthetic division is a shortcut to long division. But that is if you know what you want to divide by. If you're guessing, then sometimes and, um, you know, it might be a little harder. So, if you know what you're, and, and it gets a little more tedious, but it is a method that we will be using a lot when we get ready to solve um, polynomial and graph polynomial functions. All right, let's set up our synthetic division. Let's take this example. It's going to be x to the fourth minus 10x squared minus 2x plus 4, and we're going to divide by x plus 3. Our setup is a little different here. We're going to take the coefficients. We have a fourth degree. Oh, we skip a third degree, so we do have to put a zero there. Second, first, and a constant. So make sure you have to put a placeholder. You have to do it when you do synthetic division. We're going to set this up, and we're going to put our um, numbers in here. So we're going to have a 1 a co using the coefficients. So 1 in front of the 4. We have a 0, so we'll have a 0 placeholder. A negative 10 in front of the squared term a negative 2 in front of the x, and then a positive 4. And we're going to divide by the 0 of this factor, which would be negative 3. So we're going to divide by negative 3. All right, I'm going to do this. There's some shortcuts that we're going to get to as we get a little better at it, but for right now I want to show you all the process. So the first thing we do is we always bring our first value straight down. Then we multiply and add down. So we're going to take 1 times negative 3, that's a negative 3, and add down. 0 and negative 3 is negative 3. Then we're going to take the negative 3 times a negative 3, and that is a positive 9. And when you add down, you're going to get a negative 1. Then you're going to take the negative 1 times negative 3, and that's a positive 3. And when you add down, you get a positive 1. And then you take the 1 times a negative 3, and you get a negative 3, and you add down, you get 1. This last value over here is our remainder. We have gone from a fourth degree polynomial to a third degree polynomial, and these are the coefficients. So we would have to write 1x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 1 with a remainder of 1. Since it's a positive, we can say plus. And we would have to put that remainder of 1 over our divisor of the factor x plus 3. And that would be our synthetic 
division. All right, let's do a couple more examples of this. All right, let's take a look at this polynomial, and we're going to divide by x plus 2, but we're going to do synthetic division. First of all, this polynomial is not in the right order, so let's change that. So it's really 4x cubed, and then we would have a positive 8x squared minus 9x minus 18, and we're going to divide by x plus 2. Let's set up our synthetic division using the coefficients. So we're going to pull out a 4. We have a 3, 2, 1, so we're good. We don't skip anything. A positive 8, a negative 9, and a negative 18. And we're going to synthetically divide by the 0 of this factor, which would be negative 2. All right, remember our little plan. We bring down the first number. That would be a 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Add down, that's a 0. 0 times negative 2 is a 0. Bring down the 9. That's a negative 9. 2 times, negative 2 times negative 9 is positive 18, bring down a 0. Woohoo! All right, when we get a 0, we're pretty excited because we found that this created a 0. So this is an x-intercept. So this factor x plus 2 makes that our negative 2 is an x-intercept. So, and we have no remainder, which now we have a very clean our, uh, quadratic. So we have zeros of negative 2, 0. And we now have a quadratic, 4x squared. We have no middle term, minus 9. And if we wanted to find the other zeros, we could do that. We could move the 9 over. So we could set it equal to 0 at this point. We wouldn't have to keep dividing. Move the 9 over and divide by 4. And we would get x squared equals 9 over 4. Square root, square root. We were the artist. So we have x equals positive or negative square root of 9 over the square root of 4, which x equals positive or negative 3 halves. So we have zeros at 3 halves, 0, and negative 3 halves, 0. And we found all the zeros of that polynomial utilizing our synthetic division. All right, let's now talk about the remainder theorem. All right, Bearcats, remainder theorem, and this is going to get us through um, 4 point, I'm sorry, 2.3. Then we'll um, be able to do our classwork tomorrow. And here's a little surprise for you in this video. There are several examples that I'm working throughout the video that will be assigned to you tomorrow in class over the next couple of days. And um, just make sure that you're paying attention because if you recognize the problem when you look it up, you do not have to work the problem. You can say in the video. So just be watching for that. That'll help you out a little bit on getting your classwork done. And I miss you while I'm gone. All right, here we go. So we're going to take this. <coughs> and the remainder theorem says if a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, so it's divided by some factor, uh, which we would use the 0 of, then the remainder is r, or the remainder equals the y value, f of x. So in other words, if we plug in an x, if we divide by an x-intercept or by a 0, which is our x value, the remainder is the y value corresponding with that. So we can use that to actually evaluate a polynomial. Let's take a look at this. So we're going to divide this polynomial by x plus 2 which our 0 would be negative 2. And we're going to use synthetic division, so let's set that up. So we're going to take our uh, coefficient 3, 8, 5, and negative 7. And we're going to divide by negative 2, which we know is a 0. Or we, or we actually, we don't know it's a 0. We're going to divide by, sorry, x equals negative 2 is what I should have said. And so we don't know if what is a 0. We're going to find out if it's a 0. If your remainder is 0, then that's an x-intercept. If your remainder is not 0, then you simply found a point on the graph, which is a great tool because you've evaluated when x is negative 2. So remember our power pattern here. We bring down the 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Add down, you get 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Add down you get 1. 1 times 2 is a negative 2. Add down, you get negative 9. Okay, negative 9's our remainder. So, we have a quadratic still. We're still figuring out stuff. We didn't find a 0, so this negative 9, uh, or negative 2, is not an x-intercept, but the 
ordered pair, negative 2, negative 9, is a point on our graph. And also, negative 2, if you plugged it in for all the x's in the original equation, the output would be negative 9. So you've evaluated as well. It's a very important theorem. Let's look at another example. All right, we're going to divide this polynomial by 4, but we're going to do it by synthetic division. So let's set up our synthetic division using coefficients. First, double check in case we need any zeros. We've got the third degree, second degree, first degree, and a constant, so no zeros needed. Coefficient is 1, negative 1, negative 14, and it looks like 11. And we're going to divide by 4. In other words, it's the same as plugging 4 in for all the x's and getting an answer. If that answer happens to be 0, then 4, 0 is an ordered pair on the graph, which would happen to be an x-intercept. All right, so process, bring down the first term. Multiply and then add. So 1 times 4 is 4. 4 negative 1 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 and negative 14 is negative 2. And negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And negative 8 would give us 3. 3 is our remainder. So we have 3 is our remainder. So that means we have um, a factor of x minus 4. We have a quadratic now of x to the first, or x squared, sorry, plus 3x minus 2. And we have this remainder out here. So the remainder says if you have f of 3, in other words, if x had been plugged in, 3 had been plugged in for all the x's, your output, sorry, 4, what am I saying? This is the 4. If 4 had gone in for all of your x's, your output would have been 3, or you would have had an ordered pair on the graph at 4, 3 if you were graphing. Um, you write this, you add the 3 out here since it's positive, you could write your polynomial that way, and that's broken down. And this is kind of an important process to work through. All right, you'll have a couple of examples like that in your classwork as well. All right, we're going to look at one more example, and then we're done for this evening, and this should get you through all of 4 point, I'm sorry, 2 point. <laughs> 2.3. All right, our last example. We're asked to simplify the rational expression. So we could choose long division or synthetic division. Now, if we use synthetic division, remember we'd be dividing by this and we would have to divide by the zero. And so the d zero of that would be 3 halves. Not sure that would be the easiest path, although we could do that and we'll experiment with that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and choose long division. I think it'll be a little easier and we do need that is useful for um, us at some time. So we would go ahead, a third degree, a second degree, a first degree, a constant, so we don't have to add any placeholders. And we've got 4x cubed minus 8x squared plus x plus 3. And we would divide by 2x minus 3. So 2x times something gives me 4x cubed. I believe that would be a 2x squared. So 2x squared times 2x is a 4x cubed. 2x squared times negative 3 is negative 6x squared. But remember, we're going to subtract everything. So this becomes negative. This becomes positive. These cancel. These add down, and we get negative 2x squared plus x plus 3. All right, 2x times what gives me negative 2x squared? That's going to be a negative x. So negative x times 2x is negative 2x squared. And negative x times negative 3 is positive 3x. Remember, we're subtracting everything, so this becomes positive. This becomes a negative. Cancel. Negative 3 and a positive x is a negative 2x plus 3. Ah, almost there. We're almost there. So 2x go times something gives me negative 2x. That would be a negative 1. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. Negative 3 times negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. And we're going to subtract everything. Becomes a positive, becomes a negative. Woohoo! Everything cancels. Zero remainder. We have now simplified this to a quadratic, which we could go on and solve by the methods that we just used on our previous test. All right. Have a great night, Bearcats. See you later.